Hey y'all, today we are making a chicken and sausage gumbo. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you the way that I make gumbo. Everybody makes gumbo a little bit different. Some people make it a lot different. I'm not gonna have an argument about what goes in and what doesn't go in and all those things because everybody feels very strongly about their own gumbo. But for me, I am gonna do chicken and sausage. I'm not the biggest seafood fan. There are some things that I like, but I don't really care for seafood in my gumbo. So since I'm cooking it for me, I'm not going to put <laughs> seafood in my gumbo, but you certainly can if you want to, okay? I also do not add okra or tomatoes to mine. That is my personal preference. You do how you want to with yours, okay? So I got obviously a rotisserie chicken and I am just gonna pull all the meat off of this chicken, okay? I like to do the rotisserie chicken because it's a lot easier, it's seasoned up real good and I don't have to spend extra time trying to cook the chicken. And one of the biggest reasons that I like the rotisserie chicken is once I get all of the meat off of here, I can save the bones and the skin and all the things that we're not gonna eat and I'm gonna put it in my freezer and then once I've saved up a couple of chicken carcasses or whatever the case is, and some like vegetable ends, you know, maybe some celery, carrots, things like that, then I will pull this back out of the freezer and I will make some homemade chicken broth. Now, I don't have the time to do that right now and I only have one little chicken, so that's not enough for me to, you know, warrant getting out all the stuff and spending all day making the chicken broth, which it's not that you have to do anything. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm just not going to do it today. So I'm going to debone this chicken and then I'm going to get what's left over into the freezer and then continue on, okay? So once I got all my chicken out, there's all my chicken. Because it's going to be a while before I need this, I am just going to go ahead and stick it over in the fridge until I'm ready for it. Now, I, I said at the beginning I'm not a real big seafood fan. I also don't like sausage, okay? I know, I know, it's it's crazy talk, but I just don't care for it. I never really have, but I love the flavor of it and the people in my house like sausage, so I am gonna be using it. Um, I'm gonna use two sticks of this sausage and I'm gonna save the other one for something else because I'm not making a huge pot of gumbo, so two sticks is plenty, you know, for us. And I'm also going to cut these in half long ways and then you know cut them down and i think in my brain it makes me feel like there's more sausage in there <laughs> do you know what i mean like i feel like the people who do eat sausage will be more likely to get a little bite of sausage in every bite if i cut it in half and there's more little pieces does that make sense hopefully that makes sense so this is just the way that i'm choosing to do it you certainly don't have to if you don't want to you can just chop your sausage up and do whatever so anyway, let me know if y'all have had gumbo before, if you like gumbo. And I said we weren't gonna do, we weren't gonna have, you know, a fight about it. We won't, we don't have to argue about it, but if you have made gumbo or you like gumbo, let me know down in the comments how you cook your gumbo or the things that you like in your gumbo. Are you an okra and tomatoes gumbo eater? Or, you know, what? Are you the one who piles all the seafood, all the big crab legs and shrimp and stuff? It always looks so good to me, but I know that I just would not eat it. So <laughs> I was like, there is no sense in me spending the money on that if the people in my house are okay with just a chicken and sausage gumbo. You know what I mean? So anyway, all my sausage is nice and chopped up now. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sear my sausage a little bit. Now this is not something that you have to do. And to be perfectly honest, I don't always do it, but you know, I felt like doing it today. So here we are. All I did was dump it in there. You don't need to add oil or anything because sausage has kind of greasy all on its own. So I'm just gonna cook it around for a couple of minutes. I'm not gonna cook it all the way. It's, you don't need to try to cook it all the way because we're gonna cook this for quite a while, you know, in the gumbo. 
but I do like to get just a little bit of a sear on it just for a little bit of extra flavor, okay? Even though I don't need it. <laughs> Even though I don't need it. I know somebody was thinking that. But I do like to do it for others, you know? So anyway, just a minute, I don't know, a couple of minutes, five, less than five minutes probably. And then once you get your sausage all done, go ahead and stick that in a bowl, put it over to the side, and you'll have your sausage ready when you get ready for that. Because we're going to need that sooner than we need the chicken. Okay, so now the fun part, or maybe the not so fun part, depending on how you look at it, we're going to need to make a roux. Now, I'm not normally somebody who measures when I make a roux, but for the purposes of this video, <laughs> I'm going to give y'all some measurements. So what I poured in here was two thirds of a cup of oil. I just have canola oil. That's what I'm using. So that's what we're doing. And then I'm adding to that. So two thirds of a cup of oil, one cup of all purpose flour. Just add it in slowly and then mix it up, making sure you get all your lumps of flour out of there. If you don't get every single lump, it's okay. We're going to cook this for a very long time. So you will get them out as you stir this over the next hour, okay? So anyway, my pan is on low. It's, it's on low, okay? You don't want to have this up too high because we certainly do not want to burn this roux, especially because as long as it takes to do it, um, yeah, we don't want to burn it. We don't want to mess this up. We want this to be good and give it that really good flavor that gumbo has. Now, normally when I make a roux, I do equal parts oil and or butter and flour. But for gumbo, I don't want a thick roux. I want it to be thin like you see it right here. So that is why those are the measurements that I gave you that I'm using. Okay. And you can see how it's bubbling right here. This is a little bit too high on the flame in my opinion. So I am going to cut this down. You can see it's already just kind of changing color just a little bit. It's only been in there a minute or two. You know, it'll, it'll happen too fast if you have your fire up too high, okay? We want to cook this low and slow to get really good flavor. So this is about probably 15 minutes in. You see how it's turned to sort of a, sort of a caramel color. And we're just going to keep on stirring this. You want to make sure that you don't really walk away from this because if you do, it will burn faster than you think it will. And that's why I said you want to cook this low and slow because, I mean, like you can stop and go, you know, fill up a glass of water or something like that, but then get right over back here to it. You know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? Y you got to stay in the kitchen. You have to have some time. I was wanting to make this for several days, but I had to wait for a day that I knew I was going to have the time to stand here and baby this roux because I'm telling you the better or the longer you cook it, the better your gumbo is going to taste. So here we are probably about 30 or 40 minutes in. I wasn't timing, but see how it's like a that kind of a deeper, richer color. And it's actually darker than what it looks like on the camera because my camera I have the lights on and everything so it is a little bit of a darker color and I ended up letting this cook for probably about 45 or 50 minutes ish somewhere around in there so just make sure that you have about 45 minutes to an hour before you even get started on your roux now I have seen people that cook it faster and longer but especially if you're somebody who is just starting out doing this do it low and slow that way you have let you're less likely to make a mistake and mess it up and burn it because man how terrible would it be to get about 30 minutes into this and then burn the root and have to start all over again <laughs> that would not be a good time y'all it would not be a good time so anyway once you get your roux where you want it we're going to add our vegetables. Now, you did notice at the beginning of the video when I said I usually prep my vegetables and then you didn't see me prep any vegetables. I am going to use this bag of seasoning blend. It has onions, celery, and bell pepper in it. And I think it has some uh, parsley in there too. But this is just a, something, you know, sort of an easy shortcut that I take. So add it in there slow. I did use the whole bag, but if you're going to do fresh vegetables, which are also fantastic, a couple of things. One, it's going to take longer for them to cook down. And um, 
you need to prep them ahead of time cut them up small you're going to need about two stalks of celery one onion and one bell pepper for this size pot okay so i let my vegetables cook down for about 10 minutes okay you don't want to walk away too far because you don't want these to, you know at this stage either you don't want it to burn so about 10 minutes i just let my vegetables cook until they got soft okay and then now i'm adding in here two of these 32 ounce containers of chicken broth i am using the low sodium because i do like to be able to adjust the taste of mine you know the salt taste um, myself plus i'm adding in salt and another salty seasoning and i don't want this to be overly salty but this would have been a perfect recipe if i would have had some homemade chicken broth it would have been fantastic in here but i didn't have any right now so i just went with the store-bought it's fine use whatever you have so like i said that was my rice pot y'all saw me moving over there got my rice all cooked up and waiting so anyway i um two boxes so these boxes are 32 ounces they hold four they're four cups each so you need eight cups of chicken broth now if you see my finished product and you feel like you wanted more liquid in yours then you can certainly add some more if you want to but my pot is not very big so i kind of you know try to err on the side of caution <laughs> i know that i'm gonna fill this pot up with what i have so i try to make whatever i'm doing fit into the pot that i have i mean i know that makes sense so if you have a humongous pot and you're feeding a ton of people then obviously you're going to have to increase the amount of the ingredients and stuff that you're adding in here okay so once you get your chicken broth added in we're going to need to add um some seasonings to this okay and i do um this is another place where i kind of go on the low side with my seasonings because i don't want to over season and not be able to take it back so what i added was probably about a teaspoon of salt and then i'm adding about a teaspoon or so of garlic powder and onion powder you can add whatever you want to yours I'm also going to add in some Tony's. This is the Creole seasoning I like. You could use Slap Your Mama or whatever other brand that you like. I'm adding in about a tablespoon or so of that. And then what I like to do is once I have everything seasoned up, I let it start to cook. And once it warms up again, I'll taste it along the way. And if I feel like I need to add some more, you know, season some more Tony's or you know some more salt but the tony's has salt in it that's the season and it has the salt in it so you don't want to go too heavy-handed with your salt plus your sausage is salted you added chicken broth you know so anyway once you got that added in i went ahead and added my sausage in here and i'm also going to throw in two bay leaves okay now if you don't know anything about bay leaves they're really good for flavor but you're not going to eat these so we will fish these out later and they're pretty easy to find in your pot so don't think they're going to cook down and get lost you'll they'll still be whole so you're going to want to bring that up to a bowl and then we're going to cut it down to a simmer and we're going to let this simmer for i don't know maybe 45 minutes to an hour i needed some extra space because i knew my chicken was not going to fit in here so i needed this to cook down a little bit okay so after about it was probably about 45 minutes i took the lid off and I turned the fire back up so I could get this back to a boil because I knew I was about to add this cold chicken in and I didn't want it to take forever to start boiling again because of the cold chicken so hopefully that makes sense I'm adding all my chicken so I added all the chicken from that one chicken in there now you may be thinking that's a whole lot of chicken maybe it's too much but because it's a chicken and sausage gumbo and I don't eat the sausage I do like a lot of chicken in mine okay so I brought it back up to a boil again. And then once you get it boiling again, that way you know your chicken is good and hot. You know everything's good and hot. You're gonna cut the fire down to a simmer, put the lid back on and let it cook for about an hour. And this is what it looks like when it's done. If you've never had gumbo, you're really missing out gumbo is fantastic but if you've never cooked it because i know sometimes the roux can be intimidating but that's why i wanted to take a little bit longer in this video to kind of show you and walk you step by step through this there i'm uh, digging out the bay leaves um but that way you know you you can you'll know that you can do this too so anyway i hope that this was helpful to somebody i hope that y'all are out there cooking your gumbo as this weather gets a little bit cooler all right that's all i've got for y'all today and i'll catch y'all on the next one bye y'all